New York City's skyline is always changing. What was once an icon can just as easily become an afterthought, making way for something even bigger. That's exactly what happened at 270 Park Avenue. For decades, a 52-story tower stood here, a product of its time and engineering feat of the 1960s. But in Manhattan, where space is limited and ambition is limitless, even skyscrapers don't last forever. So in 2021, that tower was erased from the skyline, not for renovations, but for something far bigger. In its place, JP Morgan Chase is building a $3 billion super tall skyscraper, one of the most ambitious office towers ever constructed in New York, twice as tall, twice as advanced, and designed to set a new standard for corporate skyscrapers. But is this the future of Manhattan's skyline, or just another corporate giant making its mark before the next wave of redevelopment? Let's find out. In 1960, a towering symbol of corporate power rose on 270 Park Avenue, the Union Carbide Building. At 707 feet tall with 52 stories, it was the tallest building on Park Avenue at the time. A definitive example of 1960s international style, its grey tinted glass facade stretched over 6.5 acres and its black metal spandrels covered another 4.5 acres. Beneath its sleek exterior lay an engineering marvel. Two-thirds of the building was constructed over active underground railroad tracks leading to Grand Central Terminal. But in 1978, Union Carbide sold the tower to manufacturers Hanover Corporation for $110 million. Later on, through a series of bank mergers, the building changed hands several times and by the 1990s, JP Morgan Chase had inherited the skyscraper as its global headquarters. But the tower was already showing its age. By the 2010s, it was clear that the 52-story skyscraper was no longer suitable for a 21st century financial giant. While impressive in its day, the building wasn't designed for modern open-plan offices, advanced fiber-optic networks, or hybrid work models. And though upgrades were possible, the cost of retrofitting the tower to match newer, high-tech skyscrapers would have been immense. But this wasn't just about J.P. Morgan Chase. A major shift was happening across Midtown Manhattan, one that would set the stage for even bigger transformations. The 2017 Midtown East rezoning plan changed everything. New York City allowed developers to build taller and denser skyscrapers if they contributed to public infrastructure improvements like plazas or transit upgrades. For JP Morgan, this was a golden opportunity. Instead of struggling to modernize a 60-year-old building, they made a bold decision, demolish it and build a 70-story skyscraper nearly twice its size. But demolishing a 707-foot, 52-story skyscraper in the heart of Manhattan wasn't just ambitious, it was unprecedented. In a city where every inch of space is accounted for, bringing down a tower of this scale required extreme precision. No dramatic implosions, no wrecking balls crashing through glass and steel. Instead, 270 Park Avenue had to be taken apart piece by piece, one of the most complex, meticulously planned demolitions in history. When demolition started in 2019, the building became the tallest voluntary demolished skyscraper in history, surpassing the Singer Building, which was torn down in 1968. Unlike controlled implosions that bring towers down in seconds, a slow, calculated approach was the only option. The site was sandwiched between other high-rises and, more importantly, two-thirds of the building sat above underground railroad tracks leading to Grand Central Terminal. One mistake could mean chaos for the city's transportation network. So they used a technique known as top-down deconstruction. This method has been used for other skyscrapers in crowded cities, including the Deutsche Bank building in Lower Manhattan and the former State Office building in Chicago. The process began with hazardous material removal, including asbestos abatement, a critical step for worker safety and environmental compliance. To systematically bring the skyscraper down, workers dismantled it floor by floor using mini excavators and robotic demolition machines. Steel beams and concrete slabs were carefully cut and lowered by cranes, a slow but controlled approach designed to prevent damage to neighboring buildings and the underground infrastructure below. By mid-2021, the tower had been completely erased from the skyline. 
J.P. Morgan Chase never publicly disclosed the cost of the demolition, but large-scale projects of this nature suggest it likely ran into the hundreds of millions of dollars. For comparison, the Deutsche Bank building demolition, which involved hazardous materials and a similarly complex deconstruction process, cost at least $188 million. Given 270 Park Avenue's scale, location and engineering challenges, its demolition likely came at an even higher price. But this wasn't just about tearing a building down. It was also about recycling. The project aimed to be one of the most sustainable demolitions ever attempted. An impressive 97% of the materials from the old building, including steel, concrete, glass and aluminium, were recycled, reused or upcycled. That's far beyond the 75% goal set by most green building standards, making it a benchmark for future high-rise demolitions. With the old 270 Park Avenue erased from the skyline, J.P. Morgan Chase turned its focus to the future. Instead of simply replacing their headquarters, they saw an opportunity to set a new standard for corporate skyscrapers. The result? A 1,388-foot tower rising above midtown Manhattan. Designed by Foster & Partners, this cutting-edge tower will be one of the tallest office buildings in New York, standing alongside modern icons like Juan Vanderbilt and the Empire State Building. Twice the size of its predecessor, it will redefine how corporate skyscrapers are designed, from its energy-efficient glass facade to its massive open-layout workspaces. The new tower would expand from 1.2 million square feet to a massive 2.5 million square feet of cutting-edge office space. More than 14,000 employees would work in the building, over twice the number housed in the previous tower. To accommodate this workforce, the skyscraper's design prioritized open, adaptable layouts. The column-free interior would allow entire floors to be reconfigured as needed. More than 50% of the workspace was dedicated to communal areas, giving employees a workplace that felt more dynamic, open and connected than ever before. The base of the tower was lifted 80 feet off the ground, creating 1.5 acres of public space in a part of Manhattan where open plazas are rare. The ground level would include 80,000 square feet of shops and restaurants, helping bring new energy to Midtown. To ensure the building served not just its own employees, but also the city, J.P. Morgan Chase committed $50 million to upgrading the Lexington Avenue subway station, improving transit access for thousands of daily commuters. But it was the building's sustainability that truly set it apart. The new 270 Park Avenue would be New York's largest all-electric skyscraper, designed to operate with net zero emissions. The tower will be 100% powered by renewable energy, sourced from a New York State hydroelectric plant. Its triple-pane windows and automated solar shades would regulate indoor temperatures more efficiently, reducing overall energy consumption. A rainwater collection system would recycle water for use in restrooms and cooling, reducing overall water consumption by over 40%. J.P. Morgan Chase aimed to make the tower one of the most environmentally advanced corporate buildings in the world, targeting LEED Platinum, Well Platinum and Fitwell Two Star certifications. Every aspect of the design, from construction materials to lighting efficiency, was optimised to make the skyscraper not just a workplace, but a model for future high-rise development. Beyond the design and sustainability goals, the tower's construction had a massive impact on New York City's economy. By the time the building is complete in 2025, the $3 billion project is expected to have created over 8,000 jobs, generating $2.6 billion in economic activity. More than that, as J.P. Morgan Chase's global headquarters, the building is projected to contribute nearly $30 billion annually to the city's economy. This isn't just a corporate headquarters. It's a statement about the future of New York. In a city constantly reshaping itself, the new 270 Park Avenue is more than just a replacement for the past. It's a symbol of what's coming next. With the old 270 Park Avenue completely dismantled, construction on the new Supertall headquarters began in July 2021. But unlike most skyscrapers that rise from a clean slate, this one had to be built directly above active train tracks leading into Grand Central Terminal. Below those tracks was another complication, 
the MTA's $11 billion East Side Access Project, a major rail expansion deep under Midtown Manhattan. This meant engineers couldn't take the usual approach of drilling deep into bedrock or spreading out wide pile foundations. Instead, the new tower's weight had to be distributed carefully around the underground infrastructure, a challenge that required some of the most advanced engineering techniques in modern skyscraper construction. But how do you construct a skyscraper nearly twice the size of its predecessor without disrupting the massive rail network beneath it? The answer required engineering unlike anything New York had ever seen before. To make this possible, the foundation had to be reinforced before demolition was even finished. Massive sheer walls were built alongside the train lines, strengthening the underground support structure. At street level, engineers designed a unique fan column structure, where massive V-shaped columns directed the skyscraper's immense weight onto carefully placed foundations. This structural system not only solved the engineering challenges, but also lifted the tower 80 feet above the ground, creating a public plaza underneath, a requirement under the Midtown East rezoning agreement that allowed the building to rise to its extraordinary height. Despite the complexity of the site, construction progressed rapidly. By March 2023, the steel framework had already surpassed the 707-foot height of the old Union Carbide building. By November 2023, workers placed the final steel beam at the top, marking the official topping out ceremony. 93,600 tons of recycled steel were used in the frame. The exterior facade followed soon after, with its triple glazed glass panels reflecting the Manhattan skyline. Unlike traditional glass curtain walls, this design helps regulate indoor temperatures, reducing energy use while allowing natural light to flood the interior. The architecture and engineering of 270 Park Avenue reflect a new era of workplace design. The sleek, tapered glass facade not only reduces wind loads, but also maximizes natural light. The upper floors feature sky gardens, bringing green spaces high above the city, while inside, column-free layouts promote collaboration and adaptability. Smart building technology is at the heart of the design. The entire structure is fully 5G enabled, supporting high-speed connectivity for banking and financial operations. But building the future isn't cheap. This isn't just another office tower. It's a $3 billion bet on what the next generation of corporate skyscrapers should be. The cost of transforming 270 Park Avenue wasn't just about making the building taller. It was about making it smarter, more efficient, and more sustainable than anything that came before it. Of that $3 billion budget, $2.1 billion went directly into construction, covering steel, glass, labor, and advanced engineering systems. $500 million was dedicated to sustainability features, making this the largest all-electric office building in New York City and ensuring net-zero operational emissions. $400 million was allocated for public improvements, including the Lexington Avenue subway station upgrade and the creation of 1.5 acres of public space. The final countdown has begun. With an estimated completion date of mid-2025, JP Morgan Chase's new headquarters is nearly ready to take its place in the skyline. But the bigger question isn't just about this skyscraper. It's about what it represents for New York City. For over a century, Manhattan has solved its space problem the same way, by tearing down the old and building something even bigger. But if this is just the beginning, what comes next? Could the future of New York's skyline be an endless cycle of demolition and reinvention? Well, in New York, change is inevitable. And if history has taught us anything, it's that the skyline never stays the same for long. So what do you think? Is this the blueprint for the next generation of New York skyscrapers? Or is it just another corporate tower in a city full of them? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into one of the most ambitious skyscrapers ever built, Make sure to like, share and subscribe for more Mega Build stories. Because in New York, it's always out with the old, in with the new. See you in the next one.